So this is a video lesson on 4748 applications of logs and exponents. We're going to talk about uh, lots of different things when it comes to uh, applications. First, we're going to talk about a simple interest compared to compounded interest. Simple interest is when we calculate an interest rate based off an interest rate um, only once at the end of the time period. So these variables are going to come back um, quite often. Principal uh, is usually in dollars. T is in time, that's hours, for years, sorry. R is the interest rate, it's the percentage. It's a percentage um, per year converted into decimal form. So again, if we have 4% interest, that's really gonna be 0 0.04 as a decimal. I is the amount of interest. So we're talking about simple interest rate. We always take the interest is equal to the principal times the rate times time. The amount that you're actually going to repay is going to be taking the principal plus the interest that was calculated by taking uh, the principal times rate times time. So when I take out that factor P, then I get this formula uh, that we see right here. Now this is a common formula used for uh, finding interest, but only when it's one time. What happens if we take interest over multiple times throughout a year? So Again, payment periods annually means one time per year. Quarterly would be four times per year. Daily would be 365 times per year. Semi-annually twice a year. And monthly would be 12 times per year. Compounded interest is when interest due at the end of each period. Again, depending on your payment period that you have here, you're going to be adding that to the principal um, so that the interest computed at the end of the next period will be included include the new principal amount, which includes the old interest that was added in. So a real simple example of that, if I start out with $10 and I have to pay an interest rate of $1 every month, in the month of January, I'll then have an interest of 10%, which again, we know 10% is point, uh, point 0.1, so 10% of that would be $1. So then once I get to February, the new principal amount will be $11 because it will be the previous principal plus the interest that I had. So that's 11. But now I'm going to take 10% of that principal value. So 10% of that is going to take me up to $1.10. Adding that to my adding that to my old principal would take me up to uh, $12.10. And the pattern continues. Adding, taking 10%, which would be $1.21 and then adding that to my principal. Each time the interest is increasing as I go from month to month and my principal is increasing. Again, just a simple example that um, variables are gonna stay the same. We have to include this n variable, which is the number of compounds per year. And then here are your two formulas you're gonna have to know for a test or quiz. One is for when it's compounded per year, depending on a uh, number of times. Here is a continuous compounding. So again, we're going to use the value of E, which we know is the limit as N approaches infinity of 1 plus the quantity 1 over N raised to the N power. Uh, we know this defi by definition of limit that this is the same value as E. And you can kind of see there's a parallel here between these two expressions. Obviously, 1 plus 1 over uh, N is similar to 1 plus R over N. Uh, raised to the NT power, but this is just raised to N. So including the R and T, you kind of see how those would be a similar type of expressions. So let's look at our first example here. We have Rudolph who is investing $1,000 in an account that pays 6.5% interest. It's going to highlight or underline some important information. This is my principal. This is my interest rate, which as a decimal will be 0 0.065. How much money will he have in the account after five years if it's compounded semi-annually? Semi-annually tells me that it's going to happen every twice a year, so it's n equals 2. And five years, that's my time, t equals 5. So in the first example here, um, let's go ahead and plug those values into my compounded interest formula. So the, what I'm trying to find is the principal, which is 1,000. 1 plus the rate, 0 0.065, divided by 2, raised to the 5 times 2 power, or 10 power. We can put this in our calculator and come up with a value for our 
uh, amount that we have in our account. So let's go ahead and put in 1,000. One plus our fraction here, 0 0.065 all over two. This is raised to the, five times two is the 10th power, so we'll raise this to the 10th power and we'll find our value here. Since we're dealing with money, we'll round this to the hundreds place, because two decimal places is all we need for when it comes to money. So uh, $1,376.89 would be our value here for the amount that we earned after five years. Uh, what happens if it's compounded continuously? A continuous um, compounding of interest is going to use a different formula where principal would still be a thousand but here we're going to use a base of E raised to the RT power so 0 0.065 times time which here in this case would be um, five years we plug that into our calculator we get something a little bit larger which should make sense one thousand raised to the E power 0 0.065 times 5 and we end up with a value of $1,384.03 so that's an example of using the compounded interest uh, formula and as well as the continuous compounding interest formula here, go ahead and pause the video at this point and go ahead and try example two. Uh, check your work with what I have after you pause the video, um, just to double check yourself. So here we have some work, um, so you guys can kind of catch up based off and check kind of where you're from, where you're at. Let me just walk through this step by step. Uh, the first part here, we do have some interest. Uh, they tell us that the interest rate is 5%. They also tell us that the principal amount she starts with is $2,000 and it is compounded daily. So given those numbers, we know the principal is 2,000. We know the interest rate is 0 0.05. And we also know that because it's daily, the value of n is going to be 365. So I plug in those numbers into the, to the formula. Here, instead of knowing how much she's going to have or after how much time, she wants to know how much time will it take for her investment to double, meaning how, how long will it take for that $2,000 to turn into $4,000. So we plug in 4,000 for what the end result is, and we have to solve for time. Our goal here is to solve for this variable of time. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to divide both sides by 2,000 to get 2. I plug this into my calculator. I took, in my side of my parentheses here, I took this entire expression, and I plugged it into my calculator. And when I do that, and go math, enter, enter, so I have 1 plus fraction of 0 0.05 divided by 365. And I put that in my calculator. I get a very small number that's close to 1. Um, so, but if I hit math, enter, enter, it'll give me a fraction form of that, which might be a little bit easier to plug in later on. And that's where I come up with that 7,301 7, over 7,300. Once I come up with that number, what I want to do is I want to get my t out of the out of the exponent. To do that, I'm going to log both sides. And when I log both sides with the base of the exponent base right here, if I use the same base, this base is equivalent to this base. When I do that to both sides, on the right-hand side, the log will cancel with the base of the exponent. And I'm left with just the exponent. When I divide by 365, this exact value would be my amount of time that it would take for my money to double. So then looking at my calculator and plugging those values in, I realized that the time it would take would be 13.864 years. Now we also have problems like exponential growth and decay. Uh, exponential growth and decay, when the values change exponentially um, rather than linearly, we have to deal with this function where a of t, a as a function of t, is equal to a initial. Whenever you see a subscript 0 that's an initial amount, 
later on in calculus we'll talk about veloc initial velocity, initial position, um, and other types of initial values. You also see those in physics. So the initial amount of the um, item, a, a of t is the amount of the, of the substance after t years, or whatever the allotted time is. K represents the constant value. Um, and because exponential growth of decay is exponential, um, and it's continuous in this case, because we're always dealing with E here, this is a continuous growth of decay. Um, that's why we use the value of E as my base. K is the constant, very similar to the previous problems where R was our, um, our value. If K is positive, if K is greater than zero, then I know I have an example of growth. If K is negative or less than zero, then I know I have an example of decay. So here we get an example of bacteria growing, grows in a petri dish, and here's the formula. Obviously R or K in this example is positive. K is equal to 0 0.01. My initial amount, A sub zero, or in this case N sub zero, is 1,000 bacteria. And we're trying to figure out what the population might, might be after a certain amount of time. So here we have after four hours. So we're going to find N of four, which means we're going to find how much bacteria, the amount of bacteria that is, exists after four hours. So let's plug in what we know. Since we know the time is four hours, we can plug that in. And then we'll put this entire thing in our calculator to see what our value is going to be. So here we'll go ahead and do 1,000 times e to the 0 0.01 times 4 power. Plug that into our calculator and we end up with 1,040.811. They don't give us any rounding um, values if they wanted to round to the nearest bacteria or whatever it would be. So with that, without knowing the rounding, always go to three decimal places just to make sure. When will the number of bacteria reach 1,700? 1,700 means that they want to know at what time will this function reach, when will the function value be equal to 1,700? So we're going to have to go ahead and plug that in for A of N, or uh, N of T, I should say. Set it equal to the initial value times E to the constant, 0.01 times the value of time. Here we're going to solve for, again, we're going to solve for the value of t of the exponent, so we're going to have to use um, logs to undo that exponential function. First step is to obviously divide by 1,000 to isolate your exponential function. So you get 1.7 is equal to e raised to the 0 0.01 t. And then we're going to go ahead and undo that exponent. The best thing to do is to get rid of that exponent at the base of e is to natural log both sides of that equation. So the natural log of 1.7 is going to be equal to 0 0.01 times t. Dividing by 0 0.01 tells me that the time is equal to the natural log of 1.7 all divided by 0 0.01. And I can put that in my calculator to find the exact value, which for this case, time would be equal to 53.063 hours. Now, if you want to know the amount of bacteria that's doubled, go ahead and pause the video and try this problem and see if you get to the same result that I get to. Remember our doubling feature. We want the a value at the end to be twice the size of what I have initially. So we can kind of start with our formula right at this point and solve for t. So we're going to go ahead and natural log both sides to get rid of our, ex, our uh, exponent function, base e, and then divide by 0 0.01. So the time that it's going to take for the bacteria to double would be 69.315 hours. So our last example here for this uh, lesson is about half-life. Half-life has a lot to do with um, the amount of the material uh, a substance decays over time. So the amount of time it is required um, for the substance, for half of the substance to decay or to remain. So again, when we're looking at this type of problem, 
uh, we're going to go back to our original kind of function where we have the amount of the material at a certain amount of time is equal to the initial value times e raised to the kt power. Now, if we're talking about half-life, they're talking about a unit of time. So a time um, where its half-life exists. So if we're at the half-life point of a substance, that means that a sub t at its half-life, or when the time is halfway through, that time means that it's going to be equal to half of its initial value. Half of its initial value. Or a sub 0 divided by 2. <coughs> so let's look at this specific example. They give us a half life of radioactive carbon, which has a half life of 5,600 years. If that's the half life, then we know that, that a sub a of 5,600 is going to have a value that is half of the initial value. Now, once we know that it's equal to half the initial value, we'll go ahead and plug in the rest of our formula to solve for the k constant. Because the half-life is, this radioactive carbon has a specific half-life of 5,600 years, we need to find its specific k constant. So we're going to set this equal to a sub 0 e k, and then the time, again, we know what time is, that's going to be right here, 5,600. This problem becomes very similar to what we did um, in the previous problem with the doubling, but we're going to go ahead and divide by a sub 0. And when I divide by a sub 0, the a sub 0 is on both sides of the equation factor out, and all I'm left with is 1 half is equal to e raised to the k times 600. To get rid of the base e, we're going to go ahead and natural log both sides. So the natural log of 1 half is equal to 5600k. And when I divide by 5600, my value of k is natural log of 1 half divided by 5600. We could put that in our calculator and get a very small negative decimal. That would represent the k function. But we're going to leave it in the exact value form. So when we plug it in our calculator later, we'll have the exact value of the constant. So in part one of our question here, let's assume that if 100 grams of the carbon is present, in an object now, now meaning initially, how much will the pres how much will be present after 100 years, where 100 years is my time? So if we know the k constant, we're trying to find the amount. We want to know after 100 years, the initial value is 100. E k we know k is this value right here, and I'm not going to write it out in this little form, but k is this value right here. We're going to plug that in for k. And we're trying to find after how much time? 100 years. So this is the initial amount, 100 grams. This is the 100 years. So we're going to go ahead and plug that whole thing into our calculator very carefully. So we have 100 math. Well, now we're going to go uh, raised to the e power of k. Now k is a funky fraction. k is ln of 1 half of 0.5 divided by 3, divided by 5,600. And then we're going to multiply that fraction by the 100 years that we're trying to figure out. <laughs> when I put that in my calculator, I realized that there is going to be, after 100 years, what remains is 98.76, or 77, 98.770 grams remaining of that function. It's going to be a slow decay. Because the constant value is so small and such a small negative, it's going to decay very, very slowly over time. So if I ramp that up to 1,000 years, and I plug that same initial value in and that same k, and now I put in 1,000 years, because of the slow decay, it will decay, but it won't be very far. When I put that in my calculator, and I change this, 100 to 1,000, 1,000 years. What I end up with is smaller, but not too small compared to 100. And the value is 88.358 grams.
So that's a really quick um, lesson on applications of logs and exponents. Make sure you try the homework questions below and review for your test next class.